Hi, I'm Chris King, editor of Roofing Contractor Magazine, and I'm here at the International Roofing Expo with Richard Nugent of Nations Roof, the new president of NRCA. Hi, Richard. Hi, Chris. Nice to see you again. As a contractor, how did you first get involved with NRCA, and how has NRCA helped you and your company over the years? That's a really good question that I'm happy to answer um, because it's, it's a question with the answer. I got involved with NRCA to help me as a contractor. Um, well over 30 years ago, we were a small contractor, and I remember, I mean, we weren't sure about details, we weren't sure about anything, and we joined the NRCA um, really to grow our organization, become professionals at what we did, um, and be affiliated and associated with other contractors who were in our market that had the NRCA label. Uh, and I would say that it's been probably the best um, affiliation or organization that I've been involved with to grow any business I've been involved um, involved with up until this point, but certainly Nations Roof. Uh, we have several people that are coming on in um, committee roles, uh, even board of director roles, and we're very excited about that. Great. At our last Best of Success event, you spoke a lot about the importance of job site planning. How's your job site plan going in as incoming president of NRCA? That does feel like a trick question, you know, because, because if I don't have a good job site plan, then I'm a total <laughs> fraud, right? Um, you know, I, to be honest with you, I'm still formulating my plan. And, and an event like the, the IRE here allows me to see the issues and the problems that our contractors are facing every day. I mean, there's the obvious things, low-hanging fruit, like legislation. Um, but I think as I, as I look towards to the year ahead of me, I think focusing on the professionalism, and actually that's the perceived professionalism of the commercial roofing industry and residential roofing industry is a very important aspect of what NRCA can do. And it's a difficult one because it's, it's PR work. Um, so I think I'm going to be uh, working hard to, in, you know, to, to elevate basically the perception of the industry as well as um, champion the industry to, the, to a future workforce. I think one of the biggest challenges that we have ahead is going to be workforce. And interestingly enough, I, I spent most of today with um, our international friends, and we have 900 participants here at the convention from other countries. And every one of them says the same thing. I mean, Japan says it. India says it. I mean, we all know there's a lot of people in, in India and they cannot get roofing professionals or roofing workers. So this is not a new problem. It's, uh, it's certainly an old problem. And, you know, speaking of old, we have an aging workforce. We, there's many, many problems with our workforce. I want roofing to a young person, whether they're going to be a mechanic, whether they're going to be involved in management. I want it to be a choice versus a result of their life. And I think too many people certainly in the field, in operations, have become roofers because they didn't find anything else. And, that, and then they're oftentimes pleasantly surprised. If they connect with a good company, you know, they do very well. I want it to be a choice for people. I want people to understand that this is a great and proud profession. Great. Can you touch on a few other initiatives in place now that you want to continue and evolve going forward? Well, certainly membership. It's no trade association survives without membership, so it's a, it's a part of what we need to do. Um, education, and these are things that all tie into my plan. Um, if you want professionalism, it's about education and training and safety and all those things. Uh, I've always been very involved in the legislative part and the political action committee and the government relations, and that's just in my blood. I'll always be involved in it, and I would like to see more participation from our regional associations and our political action committees and I'd like NRCA to have a very loud voice in Washington because anyone who's been around it knows that that's how you get things done. Voting is great but dollars in Washington rule. You talked about membership. If someone's looking at this video who's not an NRCA member, what would you tell them to give them a chance to consider it? I'll tell a, a very brief story. I was at the um, a board meeting and we had a roundtable discussion. A gentleman was sitting there who said he's grown his business tenfold in ten years. 
And so I asked him a little about it, and, and he said, well, he was a residential contractor, and today, it, the biggest part of his company is now commercial, but still very residential, and that is why he joined NRCA. He joined NRCA to learn how to grow his company. And of course, the same thing I said earlier, the affiliation with, with the peers and the professionals. I think that most people who are not members of NRCA don't necessarily know what they don't know. And if you become involved in this organization, every day you learn. I mean, I'm a national contractor. I've been doing this for 40 years. There's not an event that I come to that I don't learn something. And if I, I learn it from NRCA, I learn it from my fellow members, I learn it from you know, uh, fellow exec or leadership in NRCA. There's a wealth of knowledge that people will share with you for the asking. And how should people get in touch with you to learn more? Well, call NRCA, but I'll even give you my email. It's rnugent at nationsroof.com, and I'll send you in the right direction. Um, and I, you know, I welcome the inquiries. Great. Well, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you.